There is a new mandate in town that takes effect November 1st here in the city. Now, Mayor de Blasio says municipal employees, including police, firefighters, and sanitation workers, must show proof of at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine or they will be placed on unpaid leave until they get a shot. My job as your mayor is to keep this city safe, keep this city healthy. And vaccination is the way. All right, joining us to talk about the mandate is Detective Paul DiGiacomo, president of the Detectives Endowment Association. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Good morning, Rosanna Bianca. Thank you for having me. All right, so Detective, uh, I hear you're not too happy about this. Why? What's going to happen? Well, it's very unorganized, to uh, say the least. Uh, we've just informed of this last night, and there are no, you know, orders yet on how it's going to be rolled out. Um, and the reality is the New York City Police Department has the highest amount of vaccinate, vaccinated people out of all the city agencies at, at this time. But there's about 30 percent that are not. And, um, you know, you have to look at other factors, such as if someone has high antibodies in their body, they should not have to get vaccinated. Uh, there are adverse effects if you have the high antibodies and you are vaccinated uh, that could be uh, detrimental to your health. There are pregnant women that, uh, in the police department that are very skeptical about getting the vaccine. There are women that just had children that are breastfeeding that are very concerned about the vaccine. And they're trying to lure people in with this $500 check, which is another problem. So you're rewarding the people that don't want the vaccine, and most people already had it, and they're not getting the $500. So that's a, you know, it's a violation of the mandatory subject of collective bargaining. And um, it's just a very unorganized system with this mayor's administration. So I'm wondering, are you going to court to fight this? Uh, do you expect your members not to show up to work at some point? Well, we will, but we will go into court to fight for their rights. And uh, we will go into the Office of Collective Bargaining, bargaining to try and negotiate some sort of settlement. Um, but uh, I, there are some people in this organization that are very against this vaccine. And we have to protect those rights as well as the rights of the people that want the vaccine. Uh, now, Detective, I know you posted on Twitter a couple days ago saying that you oppose this. I saw some of the responses on Twitter. Some people saying that those who refuse the vaccine if they don't have the medical reason should be terminated for endangering their colleagues. So what I want to know is what kind of conversations are you having with active NYC, uh, NYC detectives who have been vaccinated? Are they telling you that they feel that they are endangered by their unvaccinated colleagues? Well, the reality right now with the program that they have in place is working because they're getting mandated testing once a week. Uh, so this program right now is working, but to mandate the vaccine is a whole other story. And um, we will move into court and into the Office of Collective Bargaining to protect the rights of those members that feel that way. And then uh, I do want to ask you about the death of NYPD uh, Detective Brian Simonson. Uh, I think as his brothers referred to him as Smiley, as his was disposition most of the time. Uh, yesterday, the Brooklyn man who attempted robbery led to the death of Simonson, pled guilty. Well, what does that mean for, you know, your guys' department? What does that mean for, for his family? Well, it was a very, very difficult and emotional day uh, for his family and for all detectives. Uh, because uh, Detective Brian Simonson um, was a highly decorated detective. Uh, he did not have to work that day. We had a union delegates meeting, and he was assigned to the meeting. Uh, and he was very well respected. He served the people of the city, and he also served his, his brother and sister detectives as a delegate. And um, he did not have to go into work that night. He was off. He did because of this robbery pattern, and he paid the ultimate price. And let's make no doubt about it. Christopher Ransom is responsible for the death of Detective Brian Simonson. Here he the end. Rest in peace. Um, so, Detective Gia Giacomo, do you think that, to Giacomo, do you think that um, your members will not show up to work? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what's going to happen with the police force come the day of the mandate. What can we expect? Are we going to lose people? What do you know? Well, we're waiting to see the order, uh, when it's going to come out. I think it's going to be an impossible task uh, to do. Uh, we have a medical division that could uh, administer this shot. They're not using them. 
it just seems very unorganized. So as the information comes in, we'll look at it, we'll do an analysis, and uh, we'll get the information out to our members on what our next step is going to be. Um, but remember this, we can't afford to lose any police officers. Shootings are at an all-time high. People carrying illegal guns are at an all-time high. Cases need to be solved. These homicides need to be solved. Uh, so we cannot afford to lose uh, members of the Detective Bureau. They are what's holding the city together right now and bringing comfort and closure to these victims. So, Detective, will you be going to court and when will you do that? As soon as we get the information from the city of New York with the terms and conditions of the vaccine, we, we will be in court. All right. Detective Paul DiGiacomo, president of the Detectives Endowment Association, thank you so much for letting us know how your union feels. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.